Travis Wayne Goodsell. I thought I'd uh, decode the Seagull Gate for you guys. I've alluded to it. I may have talked about it in the real Mormon history video somewhere along the line. Uh, but uh, showed you the picture of it. I, I tried to get all the necessary architectural features in the same shot. Uh, the Seagull Gate, uh, looking through it, has the Utah State Capitol on Capitol Hill directly through it. So at Temple Square is the gate which leads directly to the front doors of the Utah Capitol. Uh, I've told you the background history and if you put the two together you go oh yeah okay oh okay <laughs> yes I um, to uh, give you the ending of the book first <laughs> Brigham Young was indicating to his Scottish Rites Illuminati brethren throughout the world that he had conquered Joseph Smith the usurper of their temple masonry. And uh, uh, the uh, plans are still in place to take over the American government. Now again, that was the ending of the story. You're now going, no, Travis, no, that's wrong. No. <laughs> You're evil. Thumbs down. So let's go over the decoding. I've already gone over all the history for you in other videos. And so we're not bringing that up. We're not bringing up the scriptural symbolisms of the last day Messiah of whom they are purposely uh, claiming to have destroyed with this symbol. What? Yes, Joseph Smith was... Uh, trying to establish himself as the last day's messiah the man child of john chapter or revelation chapter 12 the one mighty and strong is whom brigham young believed himself to be and that's why he granted it in his doctrine and covenants the year before he died uh, it's confirmed that it was joseph smith rather than brigham young unlike one section 132 on polygamy and that cannot be confirmed as Joseph's uh, so uh, uh, again I talked about him in other videos you have with the seagull gate you have a gate you enter through the gate uh, the gate by which you should enter is baptism Recognize that, Mormons? And, uh, and so it's the starting of the path. Uh, and so the gate here at Temple Square indicates the beginning of a new era. He just conquered Joseph's organization. And so he's established the Seagull Gate. And... Uh, at the Seagull Gate, you'll notice the inverted pentagram of Brigham Young's Scottish Rites Illuminati, not Joseph's York Rites Templar, Knights Templars. Again, I've gone over all that. And so, uh, yes, Brigham Young is declaring he has conquered the true religion of the Christ, the Church of Christ, the organization of the Church of Christ, the restoration of the Kingdom of God on Earth, uh, he has conquered it. And now he has established Lucifer's Church in Salt Lake City at Temple Square with the inverted pentagram, the symbol of Lucifer. And then you have the beehive. Oh, yeah, Beehive State, because the Book of Mormon talks about Deseret 
and and it means honeybee uh, and Deseret honeybees in industry. <laughs> You're not familiar with uh, Freemasonry and the honeybee symbol, Har honey, the the uh, honeycomb, honeycomb cereal. Uh, what beehive? <laughs> the beehive symbol. I don't know if I can find it to put it in here for you. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think Brigham Young knew Egyptian. Because of his Adam as Heavenly Father, it's clear he doesn't know Egyptian. He got it mixed up. And so, of course, he says he blames it on Joseph Smith who uh, did seem to know some Egyptian despite Egyptologists saying otherwise um, but uh, the uh, beehive is for industry like the, uh, we all know uh, and uh, the seagull is on top perching on top of the beehive, the industry. A seagull is a a um, scavenger bird, like the vulture. It waits for the prey to die before it then comes in and picks the meat off the bones, so to speak. And so if you, you haven't caught on already, you have at the very top the vulture who waits for death to take control and scavenge. What is he scavenging? But the bees who are industrious. That's a symbol of slavery. Remember your Book of Mormon, Mormons? The Lamanites and the Nephites? Nephites were industrious, Lamanites were lazy, wanted to enslave the Nephites to be their workers, to give them tribute, so that they didn't have to do any labor. With the inverted pentagram underneath it. As the horns of the inverted pentagram have the sun typically featured between the horns, but here you have the seagull on top of the, hunt of the beehive, taking away agency, Mormons, Luciferian economy, government, religion. Satan's plan of happiness. That's the mortal symbolization. The Egyptian symbolization is similar. Like I said, uh, the seagull is a scavenger bird like the vulture. In Egyptian, the kingdom uh, was often split into the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And there were dynasties where uh, there were two kingdoms because the northern kingdom was ruled by one pharaoh and the southern kingdom ruled by another pharaoh. Uh, the southern kingdom included Karnak uh, and that was a major uh, headquarters for pharaohs uh, through many dynasties. Uh, after uh, Heliopolis uh, was the founding uh, government kingdom in the beginnings. Uh, but when we talk about Moses, uh, Moses and the Hebrews were in the northern kingdom and the Hebrews were enslaved to Pharaoh who was in Karnak of the southern kingdom. Seeing where this is going. And uh, uh, Moses uh, 
uh, if we step out of the biblical narrative and look at it through the eyes of the Egyptians as a prince of Egypt but not the birthright blessing son they would have been educated in the northern kingdom in Heliopolis not at Karnak that's where the birthright blessing son would learn from directly from his father uh, sometimes there were co-regencies uh, but uh, the son would learn from his father how to run the kingdom whereas the other sons who were uh, uh, needing to be educated just in case the birthright blessing son dies uh, would be sent to Heliopolis away from the birthright blessing son so that there could be no coup <laughs> of the government I don't like you I want to be Pharaoh and so uh, uh, the symbol of the southern kingdom was the vulture the symbol of the northern kingdom was the uh, the bee and going many millennia back uh, even though they did have a a bigger honeybee uh, character they had two kinds of bees uh, the main one looks like a wasp but uh, they also produced honey as well back then and uh, and so yes the honeybee uh, was the symbol of the northern kingdom of Egypt and, and wouldn't you know it uh, the crown of northern Egypt is pronounced Deseret you have to put in the E's as is common for Egyptologists to do because they just had consonants so it's D S R T. That's the spelling of the crown of the name of the crown of northern Egypt. So how did Joseph know this? <laughs> but uh, yeah, Jean Jean Poulion deciphered Egyptian in 1822, or that's when it made pu went public with his publication. Long before, and so uh, this was the symbol that Brigham Young established at Temple Square, showing to the Scottish Rites Illuminati throughout the world, "I have conquered the disturbers of our plot to destroy America, and we can re now resume with our plans." And Albert Pike then wrote the letter to Giuseppe Mazzini uh, showing exactly how they were going to do it and destroy Christianity in the Third World War and they were doing just great exactly as they planned as evangelical Christians are purposely bringing about the end of the world Pence, the Christian zealots the American uh, evangelicals and uh, the latest report is the South Korean uh, evangelical apocalyptic group who's spreading the virus all because they want to fulfill the book of Revelation and Pence can't leave out Pence no more uh, little evangelical boy whose God is contrary to the Buddha judge God <sighs> so I tried warning you guys and now it's just a I told you so videos should do a playlist I told you so <laughs> and everybody's gonna hate me blame me have a the uh, actual LDS church being usurped by evangelicals uh, so uh, 
I don't know if I'll get to that today or if it'll just get tossed in the pile that I have. I don't know. 